All right, hey, we're getting fancy dancy here on Weather for Weather Geeks. Got a new little intro and some music there. I might change up the music from time to time just to keep you on your toes. All right, hope you uh, have had a good Thursday, everyone. We've had a very, very busy day weather-wise. I did uh, an hour Facebook Live during the height of the severe weather today. We cut in on TV a few times. And my day started with the heavy rain this morning that I was covering from home on the uh, on social media, including Facebook Live. So hope you uh, managed to check out a couple of those videos and stayed ahead of the weather today. Uh, obviously a very unusual January day today with all the severe weather and the temperatures that got into the lower 60s. I thought this evening we'd start with uh, just kind of a recap of what happened, including some fun stats here. Uh, this will end up being one of the wettest January days on record here in Youngstown. Uh, let's look at the list here. Yeah, we're in fourth place here on January the 12th. 1.49 inches worth of rain since midnight last night. The record 2.65 back on January 21st, 1959. And as you can see, all this entire top 10 list uh, does ex all of all of the numbers exceed an inch and a quarter. So uh, we've had some wet January days certainly, uh, and today was one of them. Now, when you count what fell yesterday and parts of the day before, we've had well over two inches at the airport in the last couple of days, but those numbers were since midnight. Now, these are 24-hour uh, rain gauge totals here from some of our backyard weather stations, 2.1 at my house in Boardman, and we had a very similar number here at the WFMJ studios in downtown Youngstown. Hermitage, 2.13. Uh, pretty close to two inches in Mercer, pretty close to two inches in Latonia and Alliance, about an inch and a half. Mespo down to Newton Falls. whole lot of rain over the last 24 hours. We were kind of in the bullseye here of, of heavy rain that stretched from Akron through Youngstown over into the I-79 corridor and then up into parts of southwest New York as well. Now these are 48-hour Doppler radar estimates here and I did an average for the region. The average comes out to 1.2 but you got to remember that uh, some of these amounts down in southern Columbiana and Beaver County and Lawrence County were not as high as the others and that skews the average just a little bit. All right, this radar loop takes us back 12 hours. Actually, I'm going to manually grab this. We had a little break from the heavy rain right around midday. This was 11.30 this morning. But then here comes the cold front early in the afternoon, and I came in to work at about 1.30 and was staring this in the face. Uh, Jess, thankfully, stuck around to help me out. Uh, we had severe thunderstorm warnings that were issued for this. We had thunder and lightning and some very strong winds as well. And actually, I think the worst-looking storm on the radar for the whole day was this one at about 2.40 that rolled out of Carroll County and then went into uh, southern parts of Columbiana County. The Doppler radar estimated wind speeds with this thing were up to 70 to 75 miles per hour. Now I haven't seen a lot of ground truth to that and the power outages have not been as extensive as I thought they would be down there. Uh, but uh, that was a pretty hellacious looking storm. That, that would be impressive looking in April or May, let alone January. We got out of the woods then as we got into the four o'clock hour, the rain pushed away and we've been dry ever since. All right, river flooding, of course, a concern here is Eagle Creek at uh, Phalanx Station in Trumbull County. The latest observation, 11.14 feet. It is well within minor flood stage, major or uh, moderate flood stage, I should say, uh, starts at 13 and a half feet for Eagle Creek up there. Now the uh, Mahoning River at Levittsburg, latest observation, 10.78 feet with a uh, an expected crest here overnight into tomorrow morning into parts of Friday. Uh, could be up to around 12, 13 feet, and you'll notice moderate flood stage starts at 13 and a half feet. So very, very close to that threshold for the Mahoning River at Levittsburg. Mahoning River at Youngstown, a flood warning in effect for this as well, and extends up into Trumbull County. Look at that thing spike over the last several hours up into the action stage and getting pretty close to that 14 foot uh, minor flood stage threshold for the Mahoning River at Youngstown. So flood warnings out for all of those locations. Now as we start to pivoting towards temperatures being a story for the overnight, it's 15 degrees colder than this same time yesterday. Again, we hit 61 at the airport today, the record 64. We were just shy of that, but uh, quite a bit colder than the same time last night. And if you think that's impressive, look at these numbers in the Mississippi Valley, 41 degrees colder than this time yesterday in St. Louis. Wow, is that a big number. All right, temperatures tonight. Again, becoming a story. We'll drop down to about freezing by midnight or so. And then, yeah, we're going to drop down into the mid-20s overnight. Now, we've been talking about this threat for any standing water to freeze up overnight. And I, I do think that's a possibility with temperatures dropping into the 20s. We don't want to run the danger of uh, 
<laughs> thought I dropped something there. Sorry about that. Uh, I, we don't want to run the danger of overstating this. Uh, on the major roads, there's not a lot of standing water left. It stopped raining four hours ago, five hours ago almost. But certainly in parking lots, on sidewalks, in your driveway, side streets, uh, you know, if, you're, if your gutters are still full of leaves from the fall and there's water sitting on the edges of the roads by the gutters, it's probably going to freeze up overnight and be slick in the morning. Uh, is this a situation where eh, everyone's going to see a ton of black ice and cars are going to be skating off the roads everywhere? Eh, I'm, I'm doubtful about that. I don't, you know, I don't want to rule out a tough morning commute tomorrow, but you know, let's not run the danger of overstating this a little bit too much. Uh, now, as we go to the afternoon tomorrow, actually a pretty nice January day tomorrow. I mean, it's going to be 30 degrees colder than today, but it is going to be fairly sunny and all in all not bad for the middle of winter. Uh, still some good news for the weekend. This moisture will stay to our south on Saturday. Now, I've left a 30% chance of a bit of snow or flurries in the forecast for Saturday, just in case. You know, I could see where it tries to snow a hair up into Columbiana County, maybe Mahoning and Lawrence counties, but it'll be low impact if it happens. It won't be a high impact thing. Uh, by far and away, this, uh, the better chance of precipitation will be Interstate 70 on south. And then as high pressure builds across, pretty nice January day coming up again on Sunday. We'll have some sunshine and temperatures getting into the upper 30s. And hey, that's a bargain for this time of the year. But boy, a hellacious ice storm uh, over the next few days in parts of the Plain States into the lower Ohio Valley. Uh, look at all the ice in Oklahoma and Kansas and Missouri and then the Interstate 70 corridor from St. Louis to Indianapolis. Columbus, eh, kind of on the border, uh, but Cincinnati has a pretty good chance of some impactful accumulating ice and uh, for good reason all sorts of watches, warnings and advisories out. It's a freezing uh, rain advisory on the southern fringes of this, but yeah, it's an ice storm warning. Wichita and Kansas City and St. Louis as well. It's going to be a very tough weekend in that part of the country. All right, let's uh, finish things up tonight with a look at the longer range. And, you know, we've been advertising this for a while. We're in the middle of a winter hiatus. Now, it is going to take a step back temperature-wise over the next couple of days, but only back to average. And then we're well above average again by early next week, uh, probably rising into the 50s Monday night, staying in the 50s on Tuesday. And even though temperatures might cool slightly, and I mean slightly, for a day or two, Look at how warm it looks on the European model here at the end of next weekend to next weekend. We saw 61 today, and we may not be done seeing a 60-degree temperature before, you know, this pattern is done with us. Uh, again, this probably carries us through roughly the 24th, 25th of the month. After that, uh, we should start returning to a more typical winter pattern with February perhaps being a lot like December. This could be a real bookend winter. Pretty snowy, rather cold in December. Same thing in February, January, more of a thaw more of a hiatus from winter. Now, I'll say this, next week while it does look warm, it also looks pretty unsettled. Uh, this is not going to be a bright and sunny warm pattern. I think we're going to see more rain at times next week. Thank you as always for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I will see you tonight on 21 News at 11 o'clock, and I wish you a 